Hello and welcome to another Beer Clipper video. If you are enjoying my content but are not yet subscribed, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. It does mean a lot to me. And then if you do click the bell and select all, YouTube will tell you whenever one of my videos goes live. So it is worth doing. This video follows on from some work I did in a Battle Games in Middle Earth video, which I will link somewhere around and also down in the description below, and is the extension to the White Tower. I've just finished it, which I'm very pleased with, it's looking great. And so what I'm going to do now is gather together the clips that continue on from the video that I've just mentioned and take it through to completion. So sit down, enjoy, and I will see you again at the end. I figured while I was working on doing the sand and paint, which I've just done for the next build of the Battle Games of Middle Earth, that I should potentially get this done as well. It's waiting to be finished from the, a couple of videos ago, and I would really like to get it done. So it's a big job. I'm not going to film it all. It's going to take a long time for me to do this in lots of stages, mainly because the modeling compound actually is quite thirsty. So I can't do it in big batches. I need to paint in small batches, put the sand on, move on, put the sand on. I can't do like all of this section at once it would be too big. It would dry too quickly, especially with it being 30 something degrees right now. Um, let me show you 31 degrees currently inside. I don't know. It's not really showing up very well, but yes, 31 degrees inside, so it's a bit too hot really. So I'm just going to crack on with this um, and get all of the this covered in the brown paint and then scatter sand on it and leave it to dry and then I can dress it and I'll bring you back for the next stage when it's done. But it will basically just be all of this white stuff will be painted brown and put sand on. The sand is dried, but there are a couple of little spots which are here, here and here, which didn't dry or I didn't actually get any sand on. They were still white. So I've just popped a little bit more brown paint and scattered some sand on. And what that means is I'm not going to be able to right now do the second coat of the brown over the top, which is a bit of a shame. However, there is a task that I have to do, which I am going to start now and get this done because it's lunchtime. I've got a few minutes, not very long. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on this area and I'm just going to paint that black. I'm not going to go down inside, I'm just going to paint over the tops at this stage. I've got some cleaning up to do and I want to plan out maybe potentially a wall across here or something. And that's going to eventually have slabs down on it as well, um, done with the Green Stuff World Roller. So I'm just going to get my terrain paint, the black terrain paint that I've got here, um, and paint it over the top of where you've got this, um, the, the blue foam exposed on the top. So I'll get that done. Um, and I'll be back to show you the next step when I get to it. This is drying. I put a little bit of black on the front as well just to uh, finish that off. And the sand is now dry enough that I can put the next coat over it. So I'm just going to get um, that done. It might take a couple of sittings. I've not got very much time now. Just uh, waiting for something to work, build at work. So I'm just going to take that two minutes and get stuck in. I'll bring you back for the next stage, which will probably be working on the inside here because then it will be scenicing and I'm done. This is nearly finished. It's not far off. So we're going to work on the inside of the uh, of the uh, cellar, whatever you want to call it, basement. So I'm set up here to do some uh, flocking. And what you can see at the back is the white tower and I brought this in so that I can try to get the same effect as I've done on this when I work over on this larger area. Obviously I'm only going to need to really worry about making sure it's the same effect very very close around the edge and I am already thinking about different things I can do on this little hillock here. I've got the path that goes down here, I've got a little bit of a slope that comes down here and I've got the other access which is coming down here. So I'm going to leave the camera running for a bit and do the flocking. I don't know how much battery is left on it. I have used, I've done a fair bit of filming, so it might die. And if it does, apologies, but I'm just going to leave it running. Um, and hopefully um, this will be interesting to watch while I play some music. So I'm going to gather my stuff and get going.
I don't know how much of that um, I'm going to be keeping on the camera or how long it will take to speed it up, but that's about 25 minutes, so it's a good long length of time. But I've done, I've done enough, and there's a couple of reasons, one of which I am quite tired now. Uh, the second is I want to let it dry because I now need to rotate this to get to the other side. However, what you saw was me doing my pretty standard flocking technique with three colours, dark, mid, middle and light, and then an over of dark just to bind it all together and to meld it all together. And then over on this ridge, I've pulled out these stones and gravel. Now this is from the back bank uh, where I live. I picked it up a couple of uh, a week or so ago because I needed to have some more of the sand, which I use f mixed with grout to give the grout a lot of body. Uh, and I was left over with this mix of stones as you can see some quite large stones and also gravel and so I've just scattered that over the top and, and glued that in place as best I can and I do want that now to dry and then I'll rotate and finish the rest of it so maybe tomorrow maybe the next day uh, but that's good enough for tonight I'm pretty tired and I'm, I'm looking to wrap that up now anyway so that was a good session it was unexpected I didn't think I'd drag this out this evening I'm quite pleased to have um, I'm looking forward to getting this done and uh, I'm planning a game on it with Songs of War, I think. Um, probably going to be my first, my first attempt will be Songs of War to try to, uh, and I'll be playing over this. I'm quite excited about that. This has dried nicely overnight. However, as I thought, I hadn't put enough PVA on last night to get all of the stones. I did that deliberately and I just want to make that very clear. Uh, this is this is how I'd, what I decided to do. Uh, because my PVA is so watered down, it's not very thick, what it's meant is that um, th when I've covered, uh, when I've put quite a deep uh, pour of gravel, it just hasn't all sunk down into the PVA. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to come along with a dropper and drop PVA on and drop some 99% um, uh, alcohol and then let that dry again. So I'll do that now before work um, and then later on I can turn the board around and I'll be able to do the rest of it and the um, path and finish it off, which is really, really cool. So there we are. It's dried well though. It's, um, the, the large stones are, are solid enough um, and with a little bit more glue around them, they'll be absolutely fine as well. So yeah, really cool. And I really like the effect. I think it looks absolutely great. Last night for various reasons, I was up quite late. And so didn't put the camera on because I wasn't really in the mood for filming. Uh, there was a lot of noise locally and I just couldn't sleep. Uh, so I got the static grass applicator out and I did the static grass which I want to do on, on this, which is really cool. And I used WWS patchy static grass 4mm for this, which is one I've not used for a little while but I really like. It's about as long as my static grass applicator can cope with, so um, I don't normally don't use it very often because it doesn't give me the best of results. But for this, where I want it to be a bit of kind of falling over and looking a bit scrotty and scraggly, it does work very well. So what I'm gonna do is hoover over the top of that, um, and then the next thing is gonna be to do clump foliage. And what I'm gonna be doing is putting it around the here. Um, there's a few places where my blending of the colors hasn't been all that great, Mainly here, to be honest, I'm going to put a bunch of clump foliage and other um, tangled stuff here so it looks like uh, maybe some brambles, whatever, next to the track. But other than that, I'm really, really pleased with how it's looking. So I have my hoover and uh, let's, get, let's get clearing. There you are, now you can see the effect I was going for. So I can reuse that, I'll put all that static grass back into the pot. I have two very quick processes to do on this, which I'm gonna grab while I've got five minutes. First of all, I'm gonna get my Hoover uh, vacuum and I'm gonna vacuum up all of the spilt over stuff which is uh, on this area here, which I don't want it, just to keep it clean. And then I'm gonna do uh, paint the terrain glue all over the top of everything again, just to give it one more seal. Uh, which won't take very long, but will just mean that these slightly loose flock will be absolutely secured in place. And then what I can do is I can then start to work on the interior here, which is the last process, because I'm happy with how the rest of the tape of this is looking. So I'm very pleased with it at the moment. So yeah, so I'm just going to grab the hoover out and then uh, paint some glue. I will, 
Oh, and there is one other thing actually, I need to put the static grass on. So that is another thing. There's some static grass to go on either side and down the centre of the track and potentially in a few places as well. So um, I need to continue that process uh, of static grassing but with a longer dead static grass than I used here. Anyway, I will get that done. Uh, the static grass I'll definitely invite you along for for that process to show you how we do it. I have put a coat of PVA over this side as you can see. I have not done the other side because I have not very much time, but at least that's done. I'll let that to dry. That will probably take 24 hours to dry properly. Um, and will dry clear. It looks horrendous right now, but if you do this, do not worry. It will dry okay. Just let it dry properly. Don't panic. Uh, and also I've hoovered over on there so that is nice and clean. And as you see, I've not yet done that side, which I'll do probably, don't know when. Maybe over the weekend if I get time, but we do have guests this weekend, so my hobby time is going to be very limited. The next step for this build is to finish inside the uh, basement. And I do think there is going to be more to this. The more I look at this, the more I want to make more and more layers and levels and expand the board into a whole playable area with maybe a town and a forest and having all sorts of ideas, make it into a full six by four, or maybe even more and have it tessellating and tiling. However, that's for the future. For now, the last thing I'm going to do on this is going to be to finish off inside here. Now, I've been spending a bit of time thinking about this, which is why this has been delayed a little bit, trying to work out how I'm going to transfer this shape so that I can actually make it in air drying clay using the green stuff world rollers and what I really should have done this is a mistake so let me just explain this what I should have done is when I got this shape cut out before I stuck these down I should really have taken a template uh, transferred or drawn through onto a template and then I would be would have been able to very easily roll up in that out get it to the right size right dimensions and, and what have you however too late now I can't pull all that up so what I found is if I offer up the board on which I roll my green stuff world rollers you can see that it is basically all of the width <laughs> there isn't very much space left uh, so if I can make this uh, for the floor the dimensions of this rolling pin then I'll be able to put that in cut it out where it's slightly off shape or slightly not not straight um, and then that will give me the opportunity to uh, to put the floor down any gaps or whatever on the sides will be covered because I will be doing the walls as well in a, uh, with, the green with the clay as well. So what I'm going to do now is roll it out and offer it up. So I will move the camera over and we will start doing the rolling. Right then, I have a little bit of the clay left over from before. However, I'm not going to make use of that because it's not going to be sufficient. So I've got a brand new pack of Daz that I'm just opening now. And I reckon that I'll probably use quite a lot of this for this initial floor. So what I'll do is uh, I will just tear that off like so and then roll it out and see how that how that covers. I also <laughs> have picked up the large roller from Green Stuff World to make this a little easier to do because the wooden one as good as it was wasn't all that good at avoiding becoming stuck. So I will get this rolled out like this and then when I've got it to a good size I will bring you back and we'll have a look at actually doing the rolling because that's going to be a bit difficult because the rolling pins are not big enough. <laughs> They're not wide enough to do this all in one go so I may need to become creative work out how I'm going to join together multiple of these when they're actually on the model. But first of all, I'll do this rolling out, so I'll get this done, and then I'll bring you back when I get to the next stage. So that's rolled out, didn't take very long. I'm going to make use of the flagstone roller, as you can see here. And you can see what I mean about it being not being wide enough really for what I'm trying to do. Um, this is not going to be anywhere near big enough in terms of width, but it is going to be long enough for me to uh, place down and work out what I'm missing. So we're going to pop some of the thin silicon rings on so that we can have a bit more of a, uh, a defined depth. I want this to be relatively thick. So we'll just slot them on the edges like so and then we'll roll. So we'll start down here. 
There we are. Whereas right, if I was trying to do something which was not a ruin, then that would be an issue here with these folds. However, that's actually going to work quite nicely when I get that in place. So I'm going to transfer this now over to the model and I'll bring you with, you, with me and we'll see what happens there. Right then, so here we are. And I brought over the tray, as you can see. And I've got myself a cutting implement as well to help. So first thing to do is going to be to offer this up and just see how well it sits in. And as you can see, that sits in very nicely in that length there. So what I'll do is I'm going to trim off these straggly bits to make it a straight edge. So I don't need to worry too much about the width that way, as we've seen, because I'm going to need to do another cut, another press um, to fill those gaps in any, anyway. So the next thing to do, now that we know that's going to fit in OK, and uh, is pretty much where we want, to, we want it to sit, is we're going to get some PVA glue, and we're going to put the PVA glue and spread it around underneath, because as I've said multiple times on my videos, clay doesn't stick. It has no adhesive properties, it just dries. So you need to put some wood glue down. You don't need to be too tidy with it. Just put some wood glue down where you want this to sit in spread it around a bit, and that then will hold it in place. And the other thing to bear in mind is because we are going to be putting walls in, they will sit down here and will also act as a little bit of a, uh, as a pressure. There we are, so let's do that. So that will act as a, as a stop for it lifting. So, excuse my arms again as I reach over. Let's drop that in place. And let's bear in mind that Anything that we miss, we can refill with little bits of, of, of rollered. Because it is a ruin, we can even put rubble there to hide it. So we'd have to be too tidy on this. This is the biggest use of a green stuff old roller I've ever done. So there we are, that's that. So what I'm now gonna do is roll some more out and fill in the rest of this space. And then there is actually just a little bit of a gap which you can't see on the camera, which is just at this end, which I will also fill in, maybe with some rubble actually. I might just do that. Um, and then I will bring you back when that's all done and show you what it looks like when it's completed because actually I need to stop now as I have other things to get on with. So I'll be doing that later on this evening. But there we are, very pleased with that. I'm very happy with how that's gonna turn out. As I hoped, I've come back to this later and I've been able to put down the rest of the floor inside. Done it in patches, you can see that there's a line there that will even out with the uh, as it dries. What I'm probably going to do is put a doorway here and then a wall along here anyway, and then maybe a wall along here and a doorway here. So you'll come out into a vestibule, you'll have a, a way through into there. That's possible I'm going to do, but I don't need to do that just yet. What I'm now going to work on is I'm going to work on doing the walls for the outside, for, for, the, for the walls. <laughs> going to work on doing the walls, which is going to be done with a stone roller. Same thing, so still the edge round clay. I'm going to roll strips of that, stick it on the side, um, and then cut the top off when it's, uh, when it's stuck on. So it's going to be a bit of an easier job than putting this together. I also am thinking about putting in a trapdoor somewhere. So before these dry, I might put a trapdoor in this corner. As I've mentioned, I am thinking about how I can actually extend this and make this even bigger into a massive playable diorama, which might be quite exciting for me to do. So I think I might do that. Um, so yeah, so if I do, then I will bring, that, uh, bring you in and show you me placing that. Uh, but that's where we're at now. I'm very pleased with how it's looking at the moment. So I've put all of the air dry clay in. Uh, I've put it all the way around all of the walls with the brick pattern as you can see and also we've got the floor in as well. I have not yet put the trapdoor in. I think I'm going to leave that because I can always add that as an additional. I can carve out the clay if I need to. Uh, I'll leave that until I do the layer below if I'm going to do the layer below because at the moment this is looking okay uh, and I'm also going to leave whether I'm going to do a wall or not coming down here, as I've said, and across there. I'll leave that as well for another time. Just gonna leave that to dry uh, and make those decisions later. Uh, the next step will be to fill in these tiny little gaps back here with some grout or whatever um, and paint it up. So um, I'll get that done. Um, whether or not I'm gonna do the uh, other walls, I will decide while I'm waiting for this to dry. 
The air dry clay is now dried. Uh, you can see, I decided to turn it around so you can see it from a different angle. You can see that there are some joins and a few bits where it's a little bit rough, but that doesn't matter, like I say. Fortunately, I'm doing a ruin. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the my favorite brick color, which is this. Um, I can't even tell you what color it is, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get hold of it again because I'm using it a lot. It is, um, I don't know, red. It's red. So we're going to use that and we're going to put that onto all of the walls. So I'll run the camera for a little bit and then I'll probably stop because it'll get a little bit tedious. But we're just going to basically paint the walls red. And I'm doing the walls red first because then I can do the uh, floor with my dry brushing and I will be able to cover up anywhere where I go over the edge. Now what you can see is I went a little bit heavy there, that's a mistake, but I'll cover that up. What I actually want to be doing is getting a more of a result like I'm getting around here. Well, I'm not really having all that much paint on, it's not quite a dry brush, but it does allow the bricks to maintain their, the, the, the mortar between looks white basically and it looks worn. So just make sure that if you're trying to get this effect, you take most of the paint off before you start brushing. Um, it's kind of like a dry brush to be fair, it is quite similar to a dry brush, but it's just a little bit more paint on the brush than in a traditional dry brush, but it gives a great finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on doing this around the entirety of this board, and I'll bring you back at the end when I have finished the paint and I'm about to start on the floor. So there we are. Let's get these bricks painted. There we are, that's done, and it's looking really nice. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the paint, like the dark grey paint, as I call it, um, in my uh, cranberry yoghurt pot. And I'm going to do basically the same technique, but on the floor. So I'm going to do a little bit of a dry brush, not too light a dry brush, but the thing with this is you need to make sure that you're going in multiple directions. Um, and not just in one, otherwise it would look odd. Um, but I'm not going to be too worried about this. What I'm trying to do here is just build up a, a colour, and I might even go for a bigger brush than this when I finish filming, um, because that's going to take me absolutely ages. But I'm just looking at building up a bit of a colour because I'm actually going to be doing some, pouring some um, grout and other things and putting some dirt and what have you. So this is not going to be the colour it will end up being um, and, the, uh, and the, the gaps between the tire of these slabs will end up with dirt and grime and what have you piling in the middle. So I'm just going to crack on with this. Um, I'm still undecided about whether I'm going to put another wall up or not. Um, so put walls down where these gaps are or I'll just leave it open. It's the sort of thing that I can decide at any time and I may indeed just leave it like it is for now. Um, just to uh, finish this build um, and then I can think about how I want the uh, the rest of it to go over time and I feel rushed then not that I feel particularly rushed now but it'd be nice to finish this I really want to uh, get a game with it <laughs> that's what I'm working towards so anyway so I'll carry on with this just as I say heavy overbrush dry brush type technique to get these bring out the tiles bring out some of the textures and then I'll be coming in with the grout to finish off this and also putting some rubble in and all sorts of stuff to make it quite interesting and that might be what I do to cover more of the gaps than actually solid walls but we shall see. I'll get this done and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like when I'm finished. I've been thinking for a while now, a couple of days, about putting the extra walls in the basement and I think I am going to do it. I wasn't but I've decided having thought about it over and over again that it will make a difference. So what I've done is I've just been measured uh, and I know roughly what my dimensions are going to be and I've just got some scrap as you can see two mil foam here. So the length of the wall that I want to do for the long central bit is 25 centimeters 250 mil and the height that I want to do is going to be five, um, five centimeters 50 mil. Let me just get my right angle ruler I didn't have it out to hand. So what we can do is I've measured my 25 and you can see that I can now offer that up here and measure my 5 up at 90 degrees. Very useful tool. Of course, always presuming that this is actually straight. And then we can measure that again. And I have come up with a very good idea. This is actually going to be slightly easier than... Um, uh, than, than I thought to do. So I've come up with an idea of how I'm actually going to get the brick effect on. I'm going to do a couple of different attempts basically. 
So we're going to cut that one out. That's going to be one attempt. I don't know which is going to work best, you see. And then we're going to do another five centimeters up because I'm going to make this wall twice. And I'm going to do it two different ways. And we're going to say which one actually works the best, which is always good fun. I like experimenting. So I will get these measured and cut. And then I'll bring you along in a second for when I start putting the brick effect on. I have two lengths that match. So I'm going to make this twice, as I've said. The first attempt is going to be on this one here. And it's going to be trying to see what happens with the, with the green stuff world roller when I just roll a straight directly on to the foam. It's just an experiment. It might be all right. It might not. If it is, then all I'll need to do is paint it. If it doesn't work, then all I've done is wasted a small strip of polystyrene. It's not brilliant, but it's not bad. I mean, it's definitely got the texture. I just don't know how long it's going to stay for. Let's try and roll the other side. I don't think that I'm going to be not doing my other idea anyway. Put it that way, I'll do both. As I say, that definitely takes the texture, as you can see, but not very well. It's a very uh, hard foam, this. Hard to compress. So I think the other idea is going to have to be done. So I will get myself ready and bring you along for that. The other idea is air dry clay, but I'm going to try a method that I've not tried before uh, to see whether it works better. As you'll have seen previously, what I normally do is I roll a pin out on this, do the actual textured rollering, and then attempt to actually marry it up and then trim off one when it's, when it's in place. For what I'm doing now, mainly because it's just not possible to do that really, it's so tight, I'm actually uh, going to plan to roll a pin out and flatten this out and then put this onto the board and then roll in, do the textured rolling pin, put the PVA on this, do the textured rolling pin, trim it while it's here and then let it go off and then turn over and do the other side. That's my plan. I don't know whether it's going to work, but we're going to give it a go. So first of all, we will smooth and roll a rolling pin out this air dry clay. So we need to make sure that we get it to long enough, but it doesn't need to be so wide. So I'll get that done, I'll pop some music on, and you can watch. You may need for me to open another pack of um, air dry clay. We shall see. I'll put some music on and we'll get this done. Okay, you can see that that's now going to fit. So what I'm going to do is peel this off, get my PVA and smear that over the polystyrene. I have a brush just out of sight, which I can use to do the smearing so I don't get my fingers all covered in glue. So we will put this, glue. put a bit too much glue out there actually, you don't need that much glue, otherwise it just won't dry. There we have, take a bit off, just use it for something else or let it dry. There we are. So there we have some PVA glue. What we'll now do is we'll set that on, like so. And then, hopefully, this will work. If it doesn't, then you will have witnessed me being stupid. But probably won't be the last time, and certainly won't be the first for regular viewers. Make sure that it stays on, because obviously it's a bit slidey. But it's certainly giving a nice, strong texture. Not that you can see because of where my arm is, apologies. Right, so if I lift that up, you can see that that is a good texture. So what I now need to do is trim that off 
and then let that to dry. And that's the, gonna be the issue with this, is that I'm not gonna be able now to really do anything with that until after it's dry, then it's gonna be turn it over and hope that I don't destroy or um, wreck the texture when I do turn it over. So we'll come along with this tool and take the, there we are. Possibly the wrong tool I've got, but it's working okay. Just to trim that off, let's get that out of the way. I think this air dry clay either needs to be used for something else immediately, or it needs to be thrown away because it's now covered in PVA. Fortunately, I have another smaller wall to do, which I'm going to do in the same technique, I won't film because it's exactly the same. Um, so I may as well use this air dry clay to do the smaller wall, and hopefully this technique will work so then I won't have two wasted walls, <laughs> but we shall see. Should dry, hopefully by this evening, and I'll bring you back when I can try the next, when I can try it again. But we'll leave that now to go off to set and see how that looks when it's done. I've just come upstairs um, after putting Rosie to sleep and uh, I found this, which is obvious. So there's an issue. The um, It's dry, which is good. So I can later on I'll roll and do apply the other side and it has worked very, very well. I am very pleased with how that's looking. However, it's very bowed. So what I'm gonna do is just while I'm, um, I'm just about to edit the uh, vlog for this week. So this will probably be the uh, the final video that I shoot before I shoot my uh, intro video. So I'm just gonna pop these weights on it and leave it like that. Uh, while I'm shooting, I'll show you the other one that I did. Uh, this is a small section, which is going to be for a doorway. So these, that will attach, that'll butt up to that and there'll be a little archway through to a small room at the back. Um, and that's worked very well. It's not really, it's a little bit warped, but it's not half as bad as the other one. Um, so yeah, that's working really well. I'm gonna finish those off and I'll bring you back where I'm doing it. Uh, but you won't be able to see that now until next week anyway on the vlog. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. Pity about the bowing. These have dried really nicely and I'm very happy with them. They're good thickness. I'm going to need to do something with the top, obviously, uh, but that's fine. I can do that afterwards. I might just run a bead of the um, air dry clay along the top. But what I'm going to do now is the same painting technique as I used for the main walls. Just, I have my cloth just out of sight here. Let's pop that into view so you can see. So taking most of the paint off and then come along and dry brush really, really quickly. It doesn't take very long at all. So I'll do that process on both of these, both sides, and then I'll be able to glue them in place. So I'll get that done. There's no point in you watching all of this. It's the same thing as you've seen a hundred times, but I did just want to show you just how nicely they've come out. Um, while I'm at it, actually, what I'll do is I'll show you the, uh, the, the attempt I made with pressing into this foam, which didn't really work very well, and I've actually since stolen a bit, and that is what that is. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've actually cut a bit off. This isn't the right length anymore, but that didn't work very well, not with this material. I might try with some different materials um, another time, but for now, that's not gonna work. So I'll get this painting done, and I'll bring you along when I come to glue it together. Right then, let's get these stuck in place. I've, had, I've just dry brushed them. I don't need to spend any more time really than what I've done to dry brush them. So using some PVA, I'm going to run the PVA down here and put them on the bottom and up the side and then stick that in place and then I'll do the long ball. leave that to dry. So these have been dried and they're looking quite good. I'm quite pleased with how they're looking. I used these uh, little supports to make sure that it stayed straight, but it stayed straight anyway. What you can't see is there's actually some gaps here um, and a little gap here, and there are other places where I need to fill in the corners. So what I'm gonna do is I have some terracotta air drying clay. I only have one packet of it. I've just picked it up just to see how it was. 
And what I'm going to do, and I'll move the camera around so you can see the gap I'm going to fill there, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make little sausages of it, and I'm going to push it in there, and then I have on my handy magnetic rack some sculpting tools, which means I can then push it all in, and it will look fine when it's dried and fill that gap. So I'm going to go around and just fill in all the gaps, just with little sausages of this, and then let that to dry overnight or go off overnight. And then the next step will be coming in and doing dirt and gravel and dust. And that will also fill in some gaps. So we're just going to fill those holes like that. So what I'll do now is I'll shift the camera quickly so you can see some of the mistakes I made around the walls. Um, and then I'll just turn the camera off and I'll keep doing this filling process. There you can see here that there's a gap right the way through. This is because this wall wasn't totally straight. And, well, that's fine, I don't mind, because I can easily fill that, which I will do now. I will easily fill that with some red air dry clay, and then that gap will be gone. So I'm going to turn the camera off now so I can make a bit more access uh, and be a bit more comfortable. And I'll bring you back when it's finished to show you what it looks like, um, and, uh, and then, then for the next step. We are really close to finishing this. I cannot wait. That didn't take me long. I filled in all the gaps I want to, um, and I'll leave that to go off overnight, and then tomorrow I'll come in and do the final bits and pieces of the weathering, and then I'll be done with this, which is really cool. So what I'm gonna do now is a step that will help me with the weathering. So let me just move the camera, and I'll show you the next thing I'm gonna do. All right, what I have is the rest of the air dry clay. Now, I could save this if I wanted to. It's, uh, it's still good. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crumble this up into bits of um, it's not something I can use for rubble. So I won't film all of this, but I'm literally just going to break it up and let it to dry, let it to go off in this little plastic tray. And what we'll end up with is some stuff that I can then scatter around to fill in gaps and it will look like broken up bricks or what have you. It must be quite small because they're quite small bricks, but not quite as sausage shaped as that one. So I'm just going to watch a video. I've just been watching Luke Towns' one million sub video how awesome is that i mean i've been watching his vi videos for for years not as many years as some i'm sure but still it's really cool to see him get to that milestone so i'm going to track some videos on and just uh, get this process done it's a bit dull um, and i think i've shown you enough and then we'll use these tomorrow when we're dressing the rest of this basement nearing the end of this build we have some rubble. This is what I made from the air dry clay. I may end up making some more, but for now that's going to be enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in, scatter that in places, like at the back here where there's quite a big gap. Um, and then once that's in, I will then get my black paint and I'll paint over the top of these again, just to kind of finish that look off and finish off the top of these. And then I think that'll be me pretty much done with this part of the build. Now, obviously there is a lot more to be done for the entirety of the diorama and I have about a 10 foot diorama now planned. Yes, 10 foot, which is a bit silly. But as I've observed in the past, when have I ever done things that are just simple, small builds? I don't do that, that's not my style. So we'll get this finished and then the part of the next build is actually being done for a Battle Games of Middle Earth video um, so um, the lake part, so you'll have to uh, wait for that to come out to see how that progresses. But part of it is also actually going to be just some more, la um, some more slopes and a little forest and other bits and pieces like that. So I'll get this done and I'll bring you back when it's finished, when I'm happy with how it looks and show you what it looks like and then I'll do the black painting. So I'll turn the camera off now so that I don't ramble and waste more of your valuable time listening to me talking rubbish. So that's done now. I've got rubble back here. I've got some here. I've got some around the entrance to the tower and then some here and some here. So that's perfect. It looks really, really good. So what I'm now going to do is just come along with my black paint and paint in over these areas where which are white. I'm doing this with a very small brush so I won't film it all again because it's going to take me a little bit of time because I need to be quite careful while I'm doing it. I don't want it to drip and I want to make sure that I stay in, in control of my paint um, and as you can see as per usual I need to stir my paint a bit more regularly than I do. Um, so yeah so I'll just get all of this paint painted with black and what I'm also going to do is paint across the top of these 
walls that I've added just in black just to finish them off a little bit. Um, I did think, and I probably if I had not forgotten, I would have put some air dry clay across the top as well, but I didn't, and it doesn't matter. It's going to look fine when it's tidied up with black like this. So I'll get this done, and then we'll wrap the build up. Yay! Very pleased. And then I'm going to actually play a game on it, I think, which will land on the channel at some point, but I'm not sure when, because I'm still learning how to film bat reps like that rather than board games. So yeah, I'll get this done, and I will be back to wrap up very shortly. There you are, that's the end of a really enjoyable build, and I hope that you enjoyed watching it. I'm very pleased that I got the opportunity to do that part of the White Tower extension, because it was part of the original plan, and to see it done is fantastic, and I'm going to hopefully be able to game on it very soon, so you'll be able to see it again there on the channel. I may pull the footage out of the previous Battle Games of Middle Earth video, showing how I did the cliffs, and put that into a short build with me style one like this and if that happens then obviously you'll see that coming and that will be in the same playlist but the interesting thing is that i have actually started another extension so if you keep your eyes open for the next bgme battle games of middle earth video and also for some more of these style ones and during the uh, vlogs you'll see that developing as i'm doing a lake and then when that's done i'll be doing the land that goes from this build down to the lake and all the surrounding areas it's going to be a very very large playable diorama i don't do things by halves so if you've enjoyed it, pop a comment below. If there's anything you would like to say, please, again, comment below. I hope that the uh, new techniques I've shown have proven useful. I've certainly learned a lot in this, and it would be wonderful to hear from you if they have been. And I'll close by saying, as I always do, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.